Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I want to thank the leaders of the General Assembly from both parties for joining us here today. Senate President Bill Ferguson, House Speaker Adrian Jones, uh, Senate Minority Leader Brian Simonair, uh, House Majority Leader Eric Lutke, Minority Leader Nick Kipke, as well as Senate Budget and Taxation Committee Chairman Guy Gazzoni. In a few moments, we will sign Senate Bill 496, the Relief Act of 2021, into law. Uh, this emergency legislation will immediately provide more than a billion dollars in urgently needed tax relief and economic stimulus for struggling Maryland families, small businesses, and those who have lost their job due to the global pandemic. As a result of this bipartisan legislation, people who have lost their jobs will not have to pay any state and local income taxes on their unemployment benefits, letting them keep more money in their pockets. Tax relief for small businesses will let them keep up to $9,000 in their pockets over the next 90 days so that they can keep their doors open and keep more people on the payroll. And small businesses will now be protected against any sudden or substantial increases in their unemployment taxes. In addition, direct relief checks will go out to hundreds of thousands of Marylanders in need, and families will receive expanded tax relief through the Earned uh, Income Tax Credit. This legislation also provides more than $100 million in additional grants to small businesses and nonprofit organizations on top of the $700 million in state economic relief that we've already provided. The Relief Act offers a real lifeline to those hardest hit, people who are struggling to get by and small businesses desperately trying to stay afloat. I introduced this emergency legislation at the start of the legislative session just a few weeks ago. And I said that there wasn't anything that could possibly be more important for the legislature to pass. And I asked our legislative colleagues to work together with us in a bipartisan way to help those Marylanders who really needed our help. And today I want to sincerely thank uh, the leaders on both sides of the aisle uh, for coming together to pass this measure with near unanimous support. It's almost unheard of for any major piece of legislation to pass in such a short period of time and with such universal bipartisan support. At a time when so many Americans have stopped believing that democracy can work for them, and as Washington remains divided and gridlocked, Maryland once again has shown the nation that both parties can still come together, that we can put the people's priorities first, and that we can deliver real bipartisan common sense solutions to the serious problems that face us. We still face a long and difficult winter ahead, and many Marylanders are still in need. But our vaccination rate is rising every day as we get more shots into the arms of our most vulnerable citizens, and all of our key health metrics are continuing to steadily decline. And now, with this Relief Act being signed into law today, even more tax relief and economic stimulus help is on the way for our struggling families and small businesses. So thank you. Before we sign the bill into law, I'm going to ask the Senate President and the Speaker to say a few words. Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Governor Hogan, uh, for your words and truly your leadership on this matter. And thanks as well to my partner in the General Assembly, Speaker Jones, uh, for your ongoing partnership and strong leadership in the House of Delegates. I also want to thank the, every member of the Maryland Senate, especially our chair of our Budget and Taxation Committee, Guy Gazzoni, and our minority leader, Brian Simonair, for their tireless efforts and for members on both sides of the aisle who were able to forge consensus on truly difficult issues in times of dire, dire need. This is an important day. It's a day when we get to show the people the best of our politics and what we have to offer when we focus on results. 
In less than three weeks, this bill made its way through both chambers with a variety of improvements and back to the governor's desk for his signature. Its passage, unanimous in the Senate and nearly unanimous in the House, demonstrates the importance and urgency of this issue. This is what the power of Maryland government can do when we focus on solving problems. While it certainly was a rush to pass this particular bill, it was not a rushed effort. Senators and members of the House as well have been working tirelessly since this pandemic began, speaking to their constituents, hearing their needs, their concerns, their fears, and hearing what needs they most needed met. There is not a single Marylander who will not be affected by this bill, and it will directly affect millions of Marylanders, including especially those who have fallen through the cracks despite efforts at previous state and federal aid. For the struggling small business owner, they'll find relief in both the sales tax credit and direct grants. For those struggling to make ends meet, a stimulus check and the largest anti-poverty expansion in our state's history. For those who need some help because this crisis has hit them particularly hard, we have utility re relief for nearly 40% of Marylanders who are stuck, aid to food pantries, and so, so much more. To the parents of struggling, uh, struggling with learners, fearing about learning loss, we have direct dollars to increase tutoring and help schools prepare to reopen. There is no doubt that we have a lot more to work on in the, in the weeks and months ahead, but this is a good day. I am proud to be with the governor as he signs this bill to make sure that all Marylanders know that help is here and on the way. Let us together make 2021 the year of true rebuilding and recovery. Madam Speaker. Good afternoon, everyone. With me are two of our key leaders in the House of Delegates. Minority Leader Eric Lukey and Minority Leader Nick Kipke. Uh, majority and minority leader. I stress that because this bill that got passed, it's not a Democratic bill. It's not a Republican bill. It's a bill for the people that all of us here represent. This is a very key piece of, of legislation. We've gotten feedback from families who didn't know how they're going to feed their children. They heard about this bill. They called into us and they were thanking us. You know, not oftentimes as legislators do we get thanks. This is a big deal. This is, a, a, is of historic proportions. We have a governor who sees what, because we all represent the same people. And the, the fact that we were quickly able to do this says a lot to us. The key to that was communication. We talked to each other, both sides. This is legislation that will affect the least of us who, who need the most from us. And for that, I am grateful. And I'm, in behalf of all the citizens that are affected by this bill in our state, we thank you and we thank everyone here that made this possible. Thank you. And now to the bill, son. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Now it's <laughs> now it's official. <laughs> it's almost excellent. Thank you. Great work. All right, great job. Great. Thumbs up. Wait a minute. Turn around. Thumbs up. Okay, the thumbs up. Two right. thumbs up. Yep. Two thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> and we're smiling also. Yeah, can you see our smiles? <laughs>